medicine traditionally we look at individual diseases, we look at their pathophysiology, what goes wrong in the disease, and then we think about how we can cure those diseases or treat the symptoms in individual diseases. What I'm going to discuss with you today is a different approach to this, which is that if we can understand cell health better and perhaps turn it back to rejuvenate cells, would that open a horizon of a different way of treating diseases, many, maybe many diseases, more than one disease and maybe many diseases. So that's the sort of the landscape that I'd like to discuss with you today. And um, we all know how we age, you know, unfortunately or fortunately. Um, the skin goes wrinkly, the hair goes gray, the eyesight goes, the hearing goes, all of these wonderful things that we all experience. And that's not only the case on the outside, but that's also the case for many of our cells, most of, of cells in our bodies. The, the cells go wrinkly over there, the energy centers of the cells, the mitochondria decline, so that energy of the cells declines during aging. The nerve center of the cells, the epigenome, decays, and the information that's contained in the cells declines. And all of that together leads to declined functioning of cells during aging. And of course, the major impact that this has, not only on wrinkly skin and gray hair, is that it increases uniquely and majorly the risk of developing all major diseases in humans. So age is by far the greatest risk factor for developing all major diseases in humans. And that's really worth thinking about in terms of maybe resetting um, age trajectory in this way. And how can that help? So that's the question we've been asking ourselves in Altos and generally the community of aging research is, can we turn this back? Can we find mechanistic insights um, of turning time back in this way? And it's worth thinking about these changes that occur in our cells and our bodies during aging. Some of them may be irreversible. So changes to the genome, mutations to the genome, may be to some extent irreversible. So we kind of difficult to turn them back, although we just heard about fantastic developments in CRISPR technologies where potentially in the future changes to the genome that occur during aging could also be reversed. But many of the changes that the, that the aging cell experiences in terms of the energy balance, changes in the epigenome, are potentially reversible. And about 20 years ago, we discovered a mechanism called epigenetic reprogramming, where the epigenome, the sort of nerve center of adult cells, can be reprogrammed to an, an embryonic state. And that gave us hope that this kind of idea, turning back time, turning back age, could actually be achieved uh, in, in, in reality. And so how do we think about this? So the, the one thing to think about the problem came from a fundamental problem in biology, which is that you know we all start development as a zygote. I hope you remember your, your own development from that stage, maybe not. And, and from this beautiful cell type, which is shown here on the right, embryo stem cells, the brown cells here on the right, and these cells are magical. They can give rise to all the cells in the body. And on the left is shown one of those specialized cells in the body, which is a fibroblast in the skin, which is important for your smooth skin and then goes wrinkly kind of thing. And normally, of course, development goes from the right to the left. It goes from pluripotent cells, stem cells, to specialized cells. Many years, many years. And a very fundamental question in development was, is this process reversible or not? Can this only go one way, or can this actually go back? And a very fundamental discovery by uh, my colleague Shinya Yamanaka, for which he won the Nobel Prize, was that he found a way of turning development back. So he took 
specialized cells, skin cells, and he put four factors, four genes into those cells. It's still a miracle and amazing, it's sort of magic. And a, a few weeks later, these cells turned into embryo stem cells. So this was the first and fundamental demonstration that development can not only go forward, but can also go back. So what about, that's about development, what about aging? In, in a similar kind of way, can we think about aging in a, in a similar way? So that, that first needs the question of how do we actually measure age? Now we can sort of, you can probably guess my age, sort of plus minus five years maybe, relatively accurately, not completely accurately, but we can now measure molecular age uh, by looking at the epigenome, DNA methylation, so-called DNA methylation age, we can in the coffee break we can take blood from all of you in the in the in the room. I'm medically qualified. I can do this, and I can then predict your age plus minus three three years. This is the most exact, accurate age predictor biomarker in in humans. Is this DNA methylation age? So then now we can measure, as we just talked about, we can now measure the molecular age of cells and we can apply this to these cells that, that if we take them from a 60-year-old individual, the skin cells, turn them back into embryo stem cells, then the measurement that we make of the molecular age of the cells is precisely zero. So we've gone back to being a baby. Now, you may remember being a baby. I'm sure you were all beautiful babies. Um, but you may not want to go back to being a baby. Maybe you want to go back to your favorite age, whatever that is, right? And also going back to stem cell state may not be all that useful for therapy approaches. It's useful for some therapy approaches, but then it's not so useful for other therapy approaches and we can discuss. So how about we try to re rejuvenate a cell, not going back to a baby cell, zero years, but actually starting with a 60-year-old cell and going back to being 30-year-old or something like that, whilst maintaining the identity of that cell, which is important, not going back to an embryo stem cell, but maintain the original identity of that cell. And that's exactly what we did in the invention that we made Sorry, this is a rather technical slide, apologies. But what we're doing here is to take a 60-year-old fibroblast, skin cells. We express those magical Yamanaka factors for two weeks in those cells. And then we switch them off again. And the cells come back from this brief journey towards a stem cell to being an adult cell again same identity, fibroblast skin cell, but now these cells molecularly read out as 30 years younger. So we started with the 60-year-old cells, we come back with the 30-year-old cells, and not only based on molecular markers, but also on functionality, measuring functionality of that cell, it has been truly rejuvenated. So that gives us a lot of hope going forward that we can, ah, apologies, so when our, 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 our method was published, there was obviously a lot of interest from the, uh, the let's say, the quality press. And, um, and this was suggested that we could apply our method to rejuvenating aging rock stars. Um, I kind of prefer Keith Richards looking the way he looks on the, on the left, but, you know, it's anyone's guess. Or, I don't know what he would like, so maybe we can ask him. And so then the final question is, you know, so clearly we can rejuvenate cells, we can turn time back in this way, we can improve functionality. How, how does that, how is that going to play out in terms of approaching disease treatments? And it's early, this is early stages, clearly this is early stages. But in animal models of a number of important adult diseases, heart disease, stroke, dementia, a number of different diabetes, 
in those animal models, if you treat those animal models with those magical Yamanaka factors, you find in each of the disease models an improvement of the symptoms. So that goes for heart attack models, for example, for stroke models, for lung fibrosis, devastating disease, improvement of the lung, of the lung function. So that's the thought that I would like to leave you with for discussion. And we are, just to sort of introduce ourselves a little bit, we are a new company. We started two years ago, Alta Stops, international company. Um, we have institutes in San Diego, one in the Bay Area and one in Cambridge. I'm in Cambridge. It's a new model of doing science. It brings together exciting elements of academic science. I'm an academic scientist for the last three or four decades with uh, the corp doing science in the corporate environment, new fusion, new career developments, new ways of working together. I can tell you about all of those things, but we are probably out of time. So thank you very much for your attention. Looking forward to the discussions. <laughs>